Changes are coming for your accounts. What is the score? When do they change? How is it going to fit together? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. As with all things, company accounts disclosures develop and change over time. So it's one of those areas to just be aware of, to know what is going to be going into your accounts as these changes are happening. Now we know Companies House did a whole host of different changes earlier in the year to introduce certain updates with increased fees and changes to how you file. But the question is, what do you need to be filing and what changes are we going to be seeing as we move forward? Now that we've left the EU, it means that they're not quite as restricted on what they can require in company accounts anymore. Before there was a European directive which restricted how much disclosure they could require in a small company set of accounts. This obviously has now changed as we're no longer part of the EU within the UK, which means they have been given that ability now to require more information. Now, as with any changes, it's not happened overnight and it wasn't the next day that we saw those changes being introduced. However, now the FRC has done their reviews, their assessments, they checked what they're wanting and now we know what is going to be coming for the first round of changes that we are seeing. So these changes are going to be coming in from accounting periods that start within 2026. So that kind of means we've got a bit of time, it's not going to be happening overnight, but these are going to be things that you're seeing in your accounts at the end of 2026, and we'll probably see them in all accounts from 2027, as all the company accounts get worked through by the accountants around the country for you as your property limited companies. So what are the changes that we're going to be seeing just so that you have an awareness? Now one of the big changes we don't know when is coming yet is going to be that your profit and loss will also be incorporated into the accounts that are filed. We don't have a date for that yet, apart from that is one of the proposals that looks to be moving forward and it's more a matter of when this information is released to everybody compared to if. That may have a big impact on whether you want to be a limited company, depending on whether you want that information to be shared. Obviously, those doing things in their own name, that information is not publicly available. Whereas in a company, that information at some point in the not too distant future will be available for all to see. But let's get back to the ones that we do know are coming and the disclosures that we will be saying in sets of accounts. Now I will say some of these different areas probably have very little impact on a day-to-day -day basis because it doesn't really matter to you but some of them are a little more quirky and they may be something that you don't necessarily completely want sharing with the world. Now the first one is compliance with FRS 102 which is Financial Reporting Standard 102. This is more going to be a statement that's added, so probably not really much of a material impact on those who prepare your accounts or you who is using and looking at your accounts. There will need to be additional disclosure about material uncertainties of going concern. Now going concern is all about whether the company can continue for the next 12 months after the balance sheet date. And if there's any uncertainties, you need to do disclosure on it to just explain. Now, you'll probably have seen these in your accounts if you are in an insolvent position where it would suggest things like the directors are going to support the company for the foreseeable future. So these notes potentially may need to be expanded and added why there is material uncertainties and what is being done to address those material uncertainties so that any reader of the accounts has sufficient information to understand the position of the accounts. We also need to disclose what is dividends paid or dividends payable. So this is one which is slightly one of those probably more controversial ones because this will be telling the world what dividends you have or haven't taken from that company. Now, if you have group structures, it'll probably be the dividends that have been paid up to the group. For those who are individuals, 
it will be disclosing the actual dividends that are taken by those individuals. So it will be sharing more information than we've actually had to share in quite a number of years now. This may or may not disclose your income, so it may be quite a confidential piece of information to you, or it may be something I, I, don't, I don't really mind, whatever. So depending where you are on the scale, it's just something to be aware of that will be disclosed going forward. There'll be more information about the use of going concern basis. So this is whether the company can keep going over the next 12 months. So to be fair, I don't think that's going to necessarily be a particular issue for many in their accounting disclosures. It's just going to be more words in the notes to the accounts that will need to be included. Any leasing arrangements will need to be disclosed. The precise details we need to check out as they're coming in, but it depends if you have any leasing agreements in place or not. So it may be business cars, it may be finance agreements with leasing of furniture. So there may just be a little additional disclosure, whether it's how much leasing you have got, leasing commitments you've got in the next 12 months, next two to five years, five years. Some of these notes that have dissipated to a certain degree will now be required to be included in all sets of accounts rather than just the kind of medium small to medium sized businesses that do the full set of accounts so it's just again additional disclosure but those it's probably not a problem that that information is going to be disclosed going forward for provisions and contingencies there will be added disclosure now from what i see on a day-to-day -day basis with smaller property limited company accounts i don't tend to see many provisions i don't tend to see many contingencies so on that basis, this probably is not going to be an issue for the majority of people. And if there is something, it's just going to be a matter of making sure you're not disclosing more than you need to be disclosing. There's extra disclosure required on share-based payments. But again, it's probably an area that we don't have many smaller companies that are doing share-based payments, which means it's probably not going to be a big impact to us. The current and deferred tax note is going to be expanded. So this is just going to be disclosing what tax you are paying. Now, this in effect is starting to indicate the profits that you're making, because if you're paying no tax, you're not making any profits. If you're paying lots of tax, you're making more profits and you can reverse engineer from a tax figure roughly what the profits are. So this is maybe a more controversial note that is being expanded but it's one of those areas that we can't really do anything about and it's just going to be a disclosure that we're going to need to make to show what our tax figures are, what our deferred tax adjustment is for potential future fake tax, as I would call it, potential tax of the future. And this note is going to be more in depth than at present in the micro company accounts, it's not really there. Small company accounts, it's not a requirement. So at the moment, there is very little in this area. This is one of those that is going to be more prevalent going forward. There's going to be additional disclosure on performance contracts, on performance obligations, on customers' contracts, which for most property companies, there is probably limited requirement in this area. So unless you're in very specific areas, this is probably not going to be much of an issue and there's gonna be no additional disclosure in this area. Related party transactions, descriptions and notes are going to be expanded. Now quite exactly what expansion there is in this area, there may be additional notes that are needed. This may be from intercompany transactions to transactions with related persons, so whether that's connected family members, connected companies, there's going to be a little more. Historically, related party notes have been included. It's only since the new accounting standards have been introduced that these notes dissipated quite noticeably. I know it was one area that the UK government were not happy about, but it's one they couldn't bring in because of the limit on how much disclosure was allowed for small and micro companies. So this is an area that they're bringing back and we'll be working with clients and you'll work with your accountant to see what disclosure is going to be needed in this area now that we are coming back to the point where we've got to make more disclosures. Historically, we needed to disclose things like what transactions have been made with a director. Now, we didn't quite go to the nth degree of every coffee and tea that was not an allowable expense that you paid for using a company card, but there was, this is how much 
the director has spent, this is how much they've repaid, this is what the director's balance is. So some of these notes, there was a lot more in the past, it looks like we're heading back in that direction. But this will be a matter of working with your accountant to see what is the disclosure that is needed. As with all these things, we want to minimise the disclosure, but disclose what we are required to do so that we're compliant with company law, we're compliant with company accounts, requirements, but we're not telling too much as part of what we want to be doing is protecting the information that we have available to us. As I say, all of these changes are coming into play for your April 2026 accounts. So we've got a little time before these are being instigated into our company account. But just some areas to be aware of where some of those notes, it sounds like there's maybe three or four that may be impacting those with property companies that we just need to be aware of and be prepared for. There are likely to be some bigger changes like we talked about the profit and loss account disclosed, being disclosed, which as we get the dates of any of these major changes, we can obviously be talking about them as it may impact what decisions you make depending how much information you want out in the public domain and how much you don't want in the public domain. If there are any disclosures you're concerned about or you're not sure what will happen, I would advise speaking to your accountant to check how it's going to affect you and what additional information is going to be required. As we get more detailed guidance on some of these areas, we'll be able to share exactly how it will be looking like in your accounts and as these start coming out, I'll be putting on the channel examples to, so you can see exactly how it's fitting together and what the world will be seeing in your accounts. For now, hopefully this is just giving you a bit of a tidbit of what is going to be happening, what is coming, so that you can just be prepared and aware of what we are going to be seeing in company accounts going forward. Hopefully today you've discovered what changes are approaching for your company accounts disclosures what will be happening and what decisions you may need to be making now. If you have any questions, then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing. Let's make tax less taxing.